All right, if you want to remove elements from the list, a couple of different ways. You can do t.remove and then specify the value. It'll run through it and it'll delete it. If you want to delete it by its index number, you can also do that. Like you could do this. T dot, I mean, this isn't going to work as where we are. But, you know, T dot remove. You wouldn't want to bother doing that, but you could do this. You know, T at element one. Whatever was at element one would then go away. What's the advantage of doing this syntax? It'll search for the first occurrence of B. And then if you wanted to, you could write this in a loop so that it would delete every version of B in the list. So I'm just going to make a list, but it's going to have some duplicate numbers in it. A couple of things we could do with this list. We could count the number of occurrences in the list. Print how many threes are there. And then list.count three. That'll tell us how many threes are in the list. Found that there were two threes. Now let's say we want to get rid of them all. And I know we wrote a, a method that would actually replace them all, but we could just do this. For or while three is in our list, list.remove three. That'll take them all out. And then let's just print our list after that to confirm that they're, all of our threes are gone. And in fact, they are. If you know the value but not the index, you use remove. If you want to delete by its index value, you saw how I did that. But that's it's kind of a lousy syntax. Don't do this. There's a far easier syntax. L dot remove, you know, L1. That would take that item and remove it. But it's far better to just use the DEL. Delete L item one, like that. I'm going to comment that one out, I believe. And I'm going to change this to zero just because I feel, now nah, I'll leave it at one. And then let's print the list again. So it deleted the second element from the list. You can, if you want, delete by an entire slice. I'm going to create a new version of L. L is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Then delete. Do I have to put the parentheses? I do not believe I do. Starting at element 2 and going up to but not including element 6. So to figure out how many items are going to delete, you take the difference between those two. 6 minus 2 is 4. So starting at element 2, which is which one? 3. three. So it's going to take four items from there. 3, 4, 5, 6. So when we print it out, it should just print 1, 2, 7, 8, 9. So list and functions. There's a sum function. There's a max function, a length function, etc. 
So print the sum of our list. Print the length of our list. Print the max of our list. Print the minimum of our list. So 27 was the sum, 5 the length, 9 and 1 the max and min, respectively. All right, in a little bit we're going to take a left turn and we're going to write a turtle program that draws a bar graph. And if you were in my uh, fundamentals class, we've already done this, and we're going to take the same code, but we're going to wind up using it for different purposes eventually. count. May as well do count one more time. L dot count the number of times we see 9 in the list. So if you're going to create a list on the fly, you usually create an empty list, and then you start adding items to it, appending items to it. So if we wanted to create a list of random numbers, we could do that. I'm going to add the uh, re import random right here. Really, I should push it up to the top. And then, how many random numbers do I want to add to it? How about 10? For x in range, 10. That'll count from 0 to 9. I'm just putting this as a comment. Now, I forgot to make my list. I'm going to recreate L and make it an empty list. So above that for loop, L is equal to blah, blah, excuse me, like that. It is now an empty list, fresh for adding things to. So let's get a random number. R is equal to random dot random int it's interesting starting at 1 returns a random number in the value of the range I wish this was smaller so I could see it I'm gonna google it up randint python 3 Now, it's certainly not a true random number. It's what's known as a pseudo-random number. And just about all these functions return pseudo-random numbers. Why is that? Because they're calculated based on a formula. And the formula uses the last random number it generated as the basis to calculate the next one. So it just keeps feeding itself with the results that look random to our eyes. All righty. So when it goes A to B, it is inclusive of B, unlike all of our range statements. And I know I have to look that up each time. So between 1 and 10. Now let's append that to our list. L.append our random number to the list. Now let's sort our list. No, let's just print it out first. Print our list. And then L is equal to L dot sort. And then print it again. So, so far, make a little note card. We have talked about list.count dot 
delete list at element x l dot remove v for value we've talked about l dot max and l dot min l dot length l dot sum I think that covers what we've discussed today. Now we're tacking on l.sort. Make sure it works before I brag too much about it. Run module. I forgot to print it out after I sorted it, didn't I? No, I got a none out of it. I have misused the sort function. Okay, apparently it modifies it on the fly rather than needing to be returned. So I'm going to delete that L equals and run it again and see if that fixed it. And it did. Okay. I thought it returned a value that then had to be stored back in the list as it does in some of the other languages I teach before and after this class. So there we go. We've sorted our list. Now we're going to draw a bar graph. We're going to do it using turtles. One turtle in particular. Well, the way we're going to do it is we're just going to be cruising that way. Then we're going to hang a left. What that sound? We're going to go up the number that we need. Like if we're graphing up, you know, to 10 or whatever, we're going to go 10 pixels. Then we're going to hang a right and go the width. So I'm going to say that we went left and then we went forward the number of pixels, you know, the X. Check all the X. The height. And then we turned right. And we went forward the width. And then we turned right again. So that we're going that way. And we went forward the, uh, the height of it. Right? And that gets us down to here to where we might then go, you know, a little bit ways further. Kind of a spacer. So. Let me make some notes of this effect. We're going to want to go left, then forward the height. Let me scroll down. And then right, and then forward the width, and then right again, and then forward the height. And we're going to turn left and go forward the spacer, which may be the same as the width. We'll see, see how we want to use it. Alrighty, but let's define this as a function. And again, I'm gonna just define it right on the fly in the middle of our code. Is that the cool way to do it? Not really. But I'm gonna import turtle excuse me, lowercase t. I'm going to make my turtle. t is equal to turtle dot capital T turtle. I'm going to get my window. wn is equal to turtle dot, is it just screen? Let me make sure that's correct. I'm going to go back to our old one, which is how to think like a computer scientist, Python 3. I'll bring it back. That's not it. All right, fine. Hello, little turtles. That's what the chapter's called. How to think. All right, it is turtle dot screen. Okay, very good. That way we can put at the bottom of our code wn.main loop and it'll wait for us to close it. Not going to even do anything at this point, right? It's not drawing, but 
I just want to test it out, make sure I don't have any syntax errors. Great. That works. All righty. Well and good. Let's create a function that's going to draw a bar. It's going to have to go in all of these directions. So this has got a lot of variables we're going to need to know. The height, the width, and the spacer. Kind of a drag to have to pass all three, three of those things in, but we can do it. So define draw bar, the height of the bar, the width of the bar, and the spacer between the bars. And you know what? Maybe I don't want to do the spacer. Maybe I want to do that down beneath, something like that. I'm going to leave that off for now. I really would like to add it, though. Okay. So we're going to have to turn left. But I'm going to set my heading to zero each and every time just to make sure that no matter what monkey business they have done, I'm going the same way. So T dot, not sure if it's heading or set heading. Let's find out. That doesn't show us. Python 3 turtle set heading. Right there, set heading. Okay. So T dot set heading zero. Now I can turn left. I'm gonna make a right angle. So why not just why didn't I just set the heading to you know ninety so it'd be going up? Whatever. T dot left ninety. So it's a right angle. And T dot forward height number of pixels. So we've done that one, we've done that one. Now let's turn right. T dot right, we're making another right angle, so another 90 degrees. Scrolled off my cheat sheet. And then we need to go forward the width of it. So T dot, and by the way, FD is an abbreviation for forward, if you didn't feel like typing so much. Go the width, then T dot right again, because that was drawing the horizontal part of it. So we make another right angle, so we're going straight down. T dot forward, the height again, get us down to the bottom. And then T dot left, 90 degrees, so that we're going along the ground again. And let's go forward our spacer. What am I typing spacer for? Forward. S for spacer. And we could come up with ve better variable names. HT for height. WT, WD for wide. I'm going to leave those alone now. But I could document them. H is equal to height. W is equal to width. S is equal to spacer. Now let's draw a few bars. But I'm going to declare the size of the width and the spacer. So width is equal to, I want each one to be, you know, 10 wide. And the spacer I want equal to 5 wide. But the height is going to be variable. So draw a bar. that is 100 tall, that wide with that spacer. Now let's draw another one that's 200 tall with that wide and that spacer. And let's draw another one that's 150 wide. I goofed that one. Pardon me? Yeah, I made my variable names W and S, so I'm going to have to type them all out, or I <laughs> get lazy. Alrighty. 
W is equal to the width, S is equal to the spacer, again, just because I typed out W and S all the way down there. Thank you for catching that. Alrighty. And there it goes. If I want the bars wider, I can make them wider. If I want the spacers wider, I can make the spacers wider. If I set the spacer to zero and the bars to 20, it'll look a little bit different, or the width to 20. Now maybe I want them filled as well. We could do a fill pretty easy. We just have to start our fill here and we'd have to end it once we get to that bottom corner. Let's go take a look and see if we can figure out where that would be. Here's before we start rocketing up. So I think our begin fill should be there. So underneath set heading, let's begin our fill. T.begin underscore fill. Never remember if it's with underscores or without. And then right here before we do our spacer, We're going to end our fill. Let's see if this works. And it's probably without the underscores. Nope. What if we don't like our cursor? What if we wish that cursor didn't show up? You can hide your turtle. We had a page full of uh, turtle commands over here. I'm not seeing hide. Wish it wouldn't always default to showing 2.7, but at least the turtles hide turtle and show turtle. Okay, fine. So here, after we create our turtle, let's hide it. So way up here at the top, or we could do it down here, right before we start calling our draw bars. We could actually even move these two statements down underneath everything. But anyways, t dot hide underscore turtle, t dot color blue. I'm going to change my spacer back so that I have a spacer. So I'm going to scroll down here and change that spacer to 5. And run it. And it blows up. Turtle has no object attribute hide turtle. So I probably should have left the underscore out. The turtle methods are slightly inconsistent. Alright, I'm not liking these spacers. I don't like the way they look. Why don't we make the pin color white? But then we're going to have to reset it to the real color. Pin up, pin down. <laughs> yeah, pin up, pin down. Okay, so by the time we draw our spacer, we're tired of actually drawing. So above our spacer, above T forward, T dot pin up and t dot pin down after we draw the spacer. We still have a little bit of a pixel there, but we could fix that by backing up and then going forward again. It's annoying to do that, but we could do it. It'd make it look a little bit better. You see what I'm saying? I don't, you, you probably can't see it up here, but if you look on your own, you can see the uh, a little pixel there. So before I lift my pin, I'm going to turn left one more time, draw the width again. No, I don't even need to. Uh, okay, we're facing the right way here. So let's go T dot backward, T dot back our width 
and then go t dot forward our width. That should draw that line. I'm going to add some comments. Fill in the bottom of the bar. Go back to corner. The first time we went up, draw the up stroke. That was the first time we went the height. Draw the width. And then on the forward.h, the other forward, draw the downstroke. Just so that this would make a lick of sense if we came back and look at it later. All right, I think we have almost a perfect bar graph. Yeah, that's looking real pretty. One thing that the textbook shows, you need help? I'll come back. Oh, okay, cool. One thing that the textbook shows is putting some text up at the top of the labels. Excuse me, putting some labels up at the top of the bars. Or we could try putting the text down at the bottom. But the text from which I'm taking this idea from shows it at the top. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go back to how to think like a computer scientist. Scroll all the way. Yeah, that's cool. All right. Where's our bar graphs? I guess it's in a different chapter. look it up. So it's dot right. The dot right command. Arg represents the text. Move. Moves the pin to the bottom corner of the text by the time you're done. A line is equal to left or right and you can also specify a font, a font and you can leave out any of these parameters that you want. So let's just do the simplest one which is dot write followed by the text that we want to write. So by the time we get up to the top, <coughs> let's look at our code again. We've drawn the upstroke and we've turned right. That might be a good time to put our text. So right here, after our first call to dot right, let's put some text here. Let's just put the height, you know. Let's write it out so that, you know, they can tell that we went up 90 or 89 or something like that. Since we're not going to draw a scale, although that would be cool. All right, that's not looking too cool. What if we did align? What if we tried to align it the other way? Oh, this is after we went forward the width, right? We've drawn the top bar. We don't want it there. We don't want to put our text after we've drawn the bar. Oh, hush. All right. Instead, we want to display our value before we draw the width of it. So I'm going to cut that and paste it above our draw the width stroke, above the first t dot forward w. All right. I like it. Now, if we change the width of it too much, then these numbers aren't going to look so great anymore. They're not going to be centered on it. You can already tell they're not centered on it, but if I made them twice as wide, but I'm willing to live with that. So if I scroll down here and I make the width equal to 30 or 40 or something like that, or calculate it on the number of items 
I was going to draw, which might be a cool idea. And there's another problem with our bar graph, which is that it's positioned from the center. You know, you might want it like that. But let's just live with it for now. Why did we go to all that trouble? So that we could print out, excuse me, draw our series of values. What do I mean by that? Go back to our code. And down here, let's comment out our draw bar calls. And let's make a like a for loop. For x in range, starting at 10 and going to 41, so that it'll count 10, 20, 30, and 40 by tens. Draw bar x, comma w, comma s. So to draw when it's 10 wide and then 20 wide and then, you know, not wide, 10 tall, 20 tall, 30 tall, and 40 tall. Nifty slick. I really wish it was centered. We could back up before we started drawing. If we were awesome, we would calculate how many far back we need to draw. I don't want to make this example too complicated, but I do want us to push it over here somehow. So I think I'm just going to back us up at the very beginning. I'm just going to lift the pin and have us go backwards right at the very beginning. And then I want you all to modify this so that you make a list and then you draw the graph for it. But okay, so before we start calling draw bar, let's reposition to left side. So t dot said set heading, if this is 0 and this is 90, then that would be 180. So we're going to run backwards. And let's just pick a value. I don't even know what it should be, but let's lift the pin up. Pin up. T dot forward. 200. Might be right. T dot pin down. We could query the window to find out how wide it is. And then we could push it all the way against that edge. Pin down should have the parentheses in the right place. That works better. Maybe you could just adjust the part how big the screen was. Right. We could set the width of the screen ourselves as we created it or adjust it, or we could just ask the screen how wide it was and then move over half of that. Let's figure out how to do that. That'd be pretty cool. Turtle, get width of window, screen. If I just change that 2 to a 3, will it show me the Python 3 turtle library? Window height and window width. So let's do that. Let's get the width of the screen and then go back that many. Half that many. We really might not want to go all the way to the edge, but yeah, it was kind of neat. So before we do all of this, let's figure out how wide we are. Screen width is equal to windows dot, and I've already forgotten, window underscore width. Window underscore width. And let's use that to reposition ourselves. Trying to think of a good name for that. Backspace is equal to SC width divided by 2. 
Have I done a mistake? No, it just doesn't look like it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so here, let's go forward our backspace amount. And I wonder if this will work. If not, I'm not going to put a lot of time into debugging it. Sorta. It did work. But it's pushed a little too far there. We should probably also add a spacer before our first one. Or we subtract the spacer from how much we go left. That's probably easier. And then that's the ask, absolute last tweak I want to make to it before I ask you all to do something with it. All right, backspace is equal to screen width divided by 2 minus the width of a spacer. That'll just knock it off the edge a little bit. Yeah, I like that. And again, we could now calculate our width based on the number of data elements. So the screen width divided by the number of screen elements, we'd have to take into account the spacers. I'm going to leave it alone. If you feel obliged whenever I give you an assignment using the bar graph, go ahead and figure out how to change the width of it to match the desired, you know, if you have 10 elements, make them all 40 wide. If you have 20 elements, make them all 20 wide, or whatever you want to do. I could take a couple stabs at hacking it here, but OK. So here's our code for going x in range, blah, blah, blah. You had a list up there called L. Do the same thing here that you did with L. But what I would like for you to do is to Set L to an empty list and then loop 10 times, adding random numbers between 1 and 100 to L. Remember, it's append actually. And then once that is done, use a for loop calling draw bar to display a graph from L. I'm going to erase this graph right here, or not erase it, but I'm going to comment it out. But that's the syntax for going through a loop, except you're going to do for like X in L, right? It's just going to be something like for X and L, or for V and L, or for height and L, whatever you want to call that temporary variable. All right, give that a shot. And of course, I'll give you all the answer in a little bit, but I want you to take a shot at it. By the way, there's a turtle command that we've never used, which is actually kind of nice if you ever saw the need. You know how it would be annoying if you were at one position and then you really wanted it to go to position 200, 300, but you didn't feel like calculating the angle to get there? You can say draw line from 0, 0 to 200 and 300, and you don't have to set the angle first, and it'll run there. In this case, it would make it more complex to try to do that because you'd have to calculate the starting position and the end position of each point. So I never demonstrated, but you could. Alrighty, so just using this as my outline, set L to an empty list. L is equal to empty square braces. Loop 10 times. I can do that. 
for what am I going to call my loop variable? I don't know. I in range up to 10, so it'll loop 10 times, counting 0 through 9. Append random numbers between 1 and 100 to L. All right, we can do that. L dot append, and we need a random number. Random dot rand int from 1 to 100. And yes, I could have gotten this number first, stored it in a variable, and then added it here. I'm not liking the way that looks with all that separated. So I'm going to move that for statement to right above the append, changing my comments like that. Matter of fact, I might move all those comments together and just leave the code in one place. And then use a for loop calling drawbar. So for x in L, for V in L, for value in L, for value in L, draw our bar. Draw a bar that tall with our width and with our spacer. I am going to move the comments together. I'm going to cut that comment, put it here. I'm going to cut this empty list and put it here just so all of our code is clean and together. I could add a comment saying what I was doing, you know, generate random numbers, draw a graph. That'd be okay. But it was too much. And remember, you can adjust the width and you can adjust the spacers just by changing that W and that S number earlier in your code. Alright, cool. I'm impressed with us. Let's go ahead and write an assignment based on this idea. Using our draw bar code, catch below, <coughs> write a program that will ask for 12 monthly sales and then print a graph representing those sales. What would be really slick is if we could combine January, February, March, and stuff like that. That's not a requirement of it, but I'm going to be really impressed if you do it and you get extra credit for it. Where the height of each bar represents sales for a month. So if you were going to break this out, where it says write a program that will last for 12 monthly sales, what do I mean? Declare an empty list write a loop that goes 12 times, ask the user what the sales were for that month. To do that, it's worth covering that, and then this will be the last thing we do today. We're going to need a parallel list. Parallel lists are when you have two lists of the same length of information that is related by their index number. So month zero is January, sales zero is January sales. Month one is February. You know, stuff like that. So, let's go do that and we're going to put it at the very bottom. I think so far we haven't asked for any input, which is always a good thing. Okay. Code asking for sales or something. <laughs> let's declare a, uh, a list called weekdays. And it's equal to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That's enough. Now we want to loop that many times. I could hard code it to three. I could check the length of the weekday. I'm just going to hard code it to three, but I'd like to see you do something a little bit more elegant. Four, you know, I in range three because we're going to ask for three sales.
input or you know x value is equal to input or sales whatever we want to call it is equal to the integer version the float version let's use float of the input of enter sales for I think I'm making that too complicated comma weekday subscript I and then just append that to our sales array excuse me our sale list all right now I really wish I hadn't called that sales I wish I just called it V or value so that I could then say that we had an array called sales or list called sales so I've made a couple of changes which is always is a bad idea as we type this but I'm going to create an empty array called sales an empty list I need to stop calling it an array that's different languages and I'm giving away like more than half of the solution at this point sales dot append that value we just read in and then let's just print out our sales at this point. Make sure it worked. <coughs> I didn't check to see what that error was. Invalid syntax. Maybe it's complaining because of the way I've split that. You're, you're, no, you were missing a parentheses at the end. Oh, okay. Yeah, I had a typo. I knew I was making it too complex. Here's how I should have done it. Print, you know, enter sales for comma weekday I. And then I could have just done input like this. Thank you for catching that. Now you wouldn't want to print a bar graph before you actually did this, right? Because it first puts a graph on the screen and then it starts asking. But anyways, so enter sales for Monday, 10. Enter sales. I've done something wrong. I am sorry, I've missed it. Pardon? I think you had that line highlighted. Oh, okay. I just had the wrong line highlighted. Alrighty. I need to boost the speed of this because it's getting tedious to watch. <coughs> Alright. Sales for Monday 10, 20, 30. So 10, 20, and 30. And just to make sure that we can support drawing floating point values before we draw our list, don't add this change. I'm just making a check. L.append, you know, 50.5. I just want to make sure that I can actually draw something as a floating point value as well as ints. And I know that to be the case. So I'm going to undo that immediately. Yeah, yeah, that worked. Okay. Get rid of that. All right, that makes sense. I'll write it up as a pretty prettier assignment. But you're going to take code like this. It's going to ask for the sales for January, February, March, April, May, June, July, and all the way, whatever. Then you're going to build a, a list called sales, and you're going to print them out. It'd be kind of neat if they were spaced kind of nicely so that it wasn't all just in, you know, in the uh, left side of the screen. And like I said, it'd be really awesome if you could put the months Maybe you could put the months at the bottom of the bar. Or if you can't put the months on there, that's okay. Just be kind of awesome. All right, are there any questions? I sure will.
All right, normally I would make a Tuesday assignment due Monday, but like I said, I want to make it so y'all don't have to sweat it over the break, so it'll be due Wednesday night next week. And y'all will notice that I've been padding out the time for three days anyways for the benefit of those who are taking this as a purely online course. All righty, well done. Any questions over this? Are we hyped up and excited? Yeah, I can tell. All righty. <laughs>